listening to the greatest. Turn the music up in the headphones. This. This is a really poor time video. Um, <laughs> but we won't talk about that. Um, you see the title. There is this huge misconception. I don't even know what it is. I don't know if it's like a misconception. I don't know if it's like something that's just been spread around. I know some of it comes from personal experiences, which which is fair. So if you've had this experience, then of course you can speak to it. But it seems like everyone believes in their mind that Range Rovers are somehow terrible and not not terrible cars because everybody knows like this is one of the best SUVs money can buy obviously they have super expensive ones you can get one that's like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars you can get a super fast one for an SUV at like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars and you can also just get some nice luxury SUVs for kind of a high price but not super high 70 grand like mine or you can even get a smaller version at like 50,000 so but right now everybody so if you go to my comments on some of my Range Rover videos um, it's just full of people saying Range Rover terrible reliability you're gonna be in the shop constantly and to me I just don't think that's a fair thing to say I know a lot of it comes from people who've never actually owned a Range Rover because um, one guy said he was choosing Escalade over Range Rover because Range Rover's in the shop too much and I was thinking to myself do you know anything about Escalades because um, they're in the shop constantly Constantly, even though I do like them and I do want one, they are in the shop constantly. So if that's your reason for not picking, for picking Escalade over Range Rover, that doesn't make much sense. So I, I don't know. We we will talk more about it in this video, but right now we are going to the tire shop and putting on some new tires. And what a better day to do it than let's go put on drag radio tires in rainy weather that is just a great idea don't you think i don't know i don't know Wider. Oh boy. I am what you call a very happy guy. Ooh. We got a 305 drag radio on the on the Camaro now. Oh man. I'm trying not to act too crazy. But I want to go crazy, let's just say. They have these tires set at 35 PSI. Um, I'll probably end up dropping them down almost maybe 10. I'll maybe drive it on the street at 25. If I'm going to do some racing, I might drop it down to like 21. But uh, these should hook up a lot better than the G2s we're hooking up. Um, so yeah, it's pretty exciting. And I think they're, I can street them enough to where like, if it rains, I won't just feel like I'm gonna die at any second. But I guess we'll see. Let's just say power. Power feels good to everyone. Let's just say. <laughs> <laughs> okay now let's go get this Range Rover and talk about what we're supposed to be talking about for any of my Camaro fans 
just know we got we got some things coming Okay, so now we can really get into what the video is supposed to be about. This crazy thing about Range Rover, Land Rover, reliability. I, I find it really dumb to hear people who have never really even, if they haven't even owned a Range Rover before, um, obviously the Vlar just came out, so saying it already has reliability issues is kind of... I don't know, a little premature. <laughs> um, I was the first one to take delivery to a Range Rover Velar in Nebraska. I think that saying it has reliability issues is just too much. Um, my thing is, okay, so the times I've had to take it into the shop, the uh, windshield was fogging. I even had... Um, what other problems did I have? So my phone won't connect to it. So that was kind of an issue. Um, I've had two recall things that they've done. Um, I got a check engine light. Some stuff like that. People are like, oh, you shouldn't have bought it. Reliability. Uh, buddy, I bought the car and it had zero miles on it. Like, no, it had seven miles on it. So everything, any problem that pops up, where do I go? I take it to the dealership. They hand me the keys to another car and say, we'll call you when this is done. And it is zero cost to me. Actually, you could say they're losing money by doing this because when they give me the new car with uh, and a different set of keys, I'm sitting there wasting their gas. Because usually when they give me, if they give me a nice loaner, if they give me a Range Rover Sport or another Range Rover Velar, I will drive for no reason. So technically, they're the ones losing money. So it doesn't cost you anything reliability. So what my problem is, is people saying, don't buy the Range Rover Velar. Um, the reliability is terrible. It's not worth it. Da, 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 da. I, on the other hand, I think it's worth it. Obviously, it's an expensive car, so when stuff happens, it, it can be expensive if the warranty doesn't cover it or anything. So my windshield broke. It cost 1100 bucks to fix. Obviously, if you bought a freaking Honda Civic and your windshield broke, you'd probably pay 200 bucks. But that's the that's fair for that car's price and this car's price. So if the warranty doesn't cover it, then yeah, you're going to pay because it's an expensive car. But the if any of you have any problems oh my infotainment goes off oh something won't work oh check engine light obviously you don't you don't pay for any of that the car has 10,000 miles on it not even that it has 9,000 miles on it so you don't pay for any of that so i i think it's corny to even say that um i really like the car i like the infotainment i like I, I like the car. Um, now, if I was buying it with, if I was buying a Range Rover with a hundred thousand miles on it, maybe I would think about the reliability history and just Land Rover, Range Rover. Maybe I would think about it like that. But nobody's telling you to buy a Range Rover Velar with a hundred thousand miles on it and no warranty. Like that's that's your own fault. I. I don't put, when I'm shopping for a new car, I don't put reliability in the conversation because one, I don't think I'm gonna keep that this car that long. Like I I thought 20,000 miles was the max I was gonna put on it, which I probably won't even get to that before it's gone. So I just thought that, I, I just think that's really corny and I don't think it's a curse as some do. I don't think it's, I don't think it's Range Rover, Land Rover's fault on a lot of stuff this has a lot of technology in it just even just the drivetrain and everything about the car has so much tech in it obviously some stuff is gonna malfunction most of the stuff is an easy fix and it give me the car back in literally five hours if that so 
Yeah, reliability, I think it's dumb. People are like, should I buy a brand new Range Rover Velar, brand new Escalade? What, what's better? Reliability. Like, dude, they're both brand new. You're going to have a warranty for freaking 40, 50,000 miles. So I'm pretty sure you're fine. And now with all these companies that will offer warranties on 50,000 mile cars and stuff like that i'm pretty sure you're good the newer the car is you're pretty good don't buy a 2010 range rover range rover and tell me that it broke that is not my fault you bought an old car good luck charlie go buy a civic ah, but yes the car i don't i can't complain rant land rover range rover reliability is not that bad to me there's nothing catastrophic has happened. I don't have to replace a freaking transmission or something. I don't know. But it's fine to me. I think we should all just take it easy. Yeah. Yeah, so let's just let's just take it easy on the on the reliability. Let's I have so many comments. I promise you since I've started since I got the Range Rover Velar, took delivery of the car, I have so many comments. So many. Just talking about reliability. I'm like, guys, I try to tell them I have a warranty. This does not affect me, but I, hey, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, they're just traumatized by something. I don't know. But whatever. Hit me up if you have any questions about the car that you want me to address or just answer for you obviously follow my instagram i was about to say instagram channel follow my instagram marco polo 20s 23 um i'm active on the story i don't post enough but i'm active on the story let's just say and it's just most of it's just dumb stuff but whatever and um Team McGregor, we're going at it October 6th, so yeah, Connor will get the dub. I don't know if I'm going to put money on that because that Russian guy is crazy. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, oh yeah, Tiger got a dub, so, so we're happy about that too. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, I really want a truck, so we're happy about that too. What else, what else, what else? And yeah, that's pretty much life. That's life, I guess. So, <laughs> subscribe, like the video. Um, I'll do a giveaway next video because I don't feel like recording back when I get home. Like the video, share, subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified. YouTube is real weird now and it doesn't want you to be notified if somebody posts a video So you have to hit the notification bell right by the subscribe button and it'll tell you anytime I upload I don't upload a lot so you won't get freaking spammed by it <laughs> But yeah, so it'll be good. Just just hit the bell. Just just do that. Okay, okay I got the Discount tire 168th and Maple Yada realist. Oh baby. Extreme drag. Let's get it. Let's get it. You too. I guess you can get it too. Okay. Now let's get these on eBay. Ugh.